So if you guys don't remember, there was a 64 year old woman who went viral because she was pregnant. I can't believe my mom is pregnant at 64. So how you feel about being a, a mom again? It's unbelievable. I cannot believe it. Like, what are you thinking right now? What am I gonna do? Like, you are literally pregnant. Eight weeks? I am too old for that. Apparently, not only is she pregnant, but she's now a single mom. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. Hey, Reggie, I'm trying to call your phone and stuff and you're not answering. I need to get with you, I need to talk to you. But you ain't answering, you ignoring me. But when I catch up with you, Reggie, I didn't get pregnant by myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get in touch with you to let you know what's going on. But you ain't been answering your phone. You have not been answering. Man, leave Reggie alone, man. Reggie, Reggie up off like five Viagra, okay? He got a headache right now. You know what I'm saying? He he hasn't recovered yet. You know what I'm saying? That 60-year-old short, he hit different. Man's gonna need like two to three months. Y'all ain't cool about Reggie, about Reggie. Reggie is in recovery right now. What are you talking about? So I'm out here looking for you now, and it's raining out here like hell. You have a whole child on the way. You know, and my mom did not deserve the way you have been treating her. So we gonna have you stand on business today. And when we find you, we need you to step up to the plate. Because she didn't make little peanut on her own. <laughs> Sounds to be a joke. Little Peter? This, this card. This card. And I'm not going for it. You want to tell him anything else? No, I'll be, I'm, I'm going to get up with you. We're going to find him. I'm Don't find worry, him. Mom. Don't stress. Because like I said, you know, he knew what he was doing. And then him talking about, oh, well, he can't have kids. <laughs> okay. Well, you got one here. Exactly. Like, you know, that's just crazy. I am so disappointed. I'm so sorry you even have to go through this because like I said, it shouldn't even come down to this. It shouldn't even come down to this. And then tell him the message that he sent you. Don't call me no more. I'm going to get him. I'm going to catch up with him. I can't believe if it, him. If it has to be to me coming to your job, I will do it. Okay. Period. So, All right. I'm going to try to get with you today. Try to call you today too. Like I said, let this be your message, Reggie, that we've been trying to reach out to you. And I seen you in my stories. Like I said, you got 24 hours to respond. And if you don't, we are coming to your job. Okay? Oh, what, man? 24 hours to respond. Man might have 24 hours left. Okay, he's chilling. He's trying to live his best life. And look, I hope this isn't fake. Because if this is fake, this is creating a very negative portrayal of black people. Because why is it that you would create a story that a 64-year-old woman is pregnant and then create a story that she's a single mom? That just makes everyone look bad. You promise me in my birthday day, you are going to buy me the handbag of Chanel. Sorry. Do you remember when you promised me at my birthday you are going to give me the Chanel bag? Okay, but that's when we were together, love. Like, you broke up with me? Yeah, but a promise is a promise. Okay, so what do you want? I came here to get my handbag. Your handbag? Yeah, but you, we broke up six months ago. Doesn't matter. We broke up six months ago. You told me in my birthday you are going to give me the handbag. Yeah, when we were together. We're not together anymore, so it doesn't matter. Like, when we're not together anymore, so why? Yeah, like, I don't understand why you're here. If we are together or not together, that doesn't matter, but... By the way... If you guys don't know British weather, this looks like it's early morning, okay? She didn't even wait, she didn't even wait to see if she's going to get the gift. She woke up and went straight to his house, okay? She got the team wrapped around her. It's cold in the UK, okay? This is this looks like 7 a.m. She's that damn bad for the gift? Damn! You actually, you make a promise, and I always keep my word. 
when I'm say something and you should do too. You told me you are going to give me my birthday the handbag. Yeah, so I said that I'll get you a handbag when we were like boyfriend and girlfriend. We're not we're not together anymore. We're not we're, we're not in anything anymore. So, but now you've come to me in my house saying to me, "Hey, where's my bag?" Of course. What do, what do you mean of che course? Che faccio la figura della pezzente? Eh, Sorry? Mi dici delle cose e poi non le fai? I uh, love Look, it's your birthday. Go spend it with your family. Go spend it with your friends. I don't care. Just yes, not with me. I will do you... that later on. But now I come to collect my gift because you promised me because a gift for my birthday. And I come to take my gift. So I can go what to gift? the party. We've broken up. We've broken up. We've broken up. We've broken up. It's like me saying to you, no, 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 hold on, hold on a minute, yeah, hold on a minute, yeah, here, yeah, sunshine, yeah, hold on a minute, here, yeah, love, yeah. It's like me saying to you, you promised me commitment in our relationship. Imagine, right? Imagine. You and your girlfriend are together, right? You guys have a date planned where you're going to go somewhere, you're going to go to a hotel. But you guys break up. And on that date in the hotel, she says she's going to do all this, she's going to get freaky in the lingerie. But you guys break up. And then you turn up at her house like, yo, <laughs> it's that time. Yeah, yeah, we broke up, but forget about that. You said on this date and this time that we were going to do X, Y, and Z. But then you said, oh, no, 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 I want to break up from the relationship. No, it, it doesn't work like that. Cool, you broke up from the relationship with me. That's fine. I moved on. But now you can't come to my house saying, oh, where's my bag? It, 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 life, life doesn't work like that. If I say something, even if we break up, I'm still keeping my word. Mica sono come te. No, 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 but no, because at the start of that relationship, you made a word to commit to the relationship. So if you can't commit to the relationship, then you can't commit to the rewards from the relationship. No, so there's no word? bag. You are keeping the word. Listen, listen, I don't have the time to waste with you. Prom properly. Okay, come but on. you've got the time to come to my house to, 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 to ask for a bag. Of course. What? Give me the gift and I will go away. Because I even don't want to see your funny face. <laughs> there is no gift. If you want a bag, you can go to the Chanel shop and get it yourself. So uh, you are not giving me the gift. So let me say this to our friend. Uh, that you promised something and you didn't keep the, your word. How does he feel? No, I, 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 no, the thing is, I didn't even promise you anything. I just said to you, cool, on your you birthday, promised, we went shopping, you, you said that you wanted this bag, and I said, cool, I'll get you it for your birthday. But we broke up a long time ago, and, and now you're here. It's 7 o'clock in the morning, you got the muck in your eye, guy, crusty, your tea ain't brush, you're coming to my crib talking about our bag, move. What I'm saying is, why are you paying her rent and her, because she's, like, Because she lost her, her job, and she's behind on the rent. And she, and she stays with, and, and he has my son. And I'm going to make sure he's straight. I'm not going to have my son out on the street. Is, I'm not saying he's going to be on the street. If she knew how to take care of her y'all's kid, then he wouldn't that, be on the but, street. Yeah, but it takes two people to take care of a kid. Sure. I realize that. But this, this is like cutting into us. And I'm really not feeling this. You're not feeling me taking care of my no, son. No, you're, you're taking care of your son. But why don't you bring your son to your house so she could pay her own rent? Because she's the one that has custody of him. And she's the one that's been taking care of him all this time. Well, it's then now y'all need to find a way it's to not, split custody or something because it's cutting into us and I don't like it. When it cut into us more if he was actually staying with me? Exactly. But what I'm saying is why are you paying her rent and her... Because, she's, like, because she lost her, her job and she's behind on the rent. And she, and she stays with, and, and he has my son, and I'm going to make sure he's straight. I'm not going to have my son out on the street. Is, I'm not saying he's going to be on the street. If she knew how to take care of her y'all's kid, then he wouldn't that, be on the street. But, yeah, but it takes two people to take care of a kid. Sure. I realize that, but this, this is like cutting into us, and I'm really not feeling this. You're not feeling me taking care of my no, son? Basically, no, you're, you're, you're taking care of your son. But why don't you bring your son to your house so she could pay her own rent? Because she's the one that has custody of him. 
and she's the one that's been taking care of him all this time. Well, it's then now y'all need to find back. a way it's to not, split custody or something because it's cutting into us, and I don't like it. When it cut into us more, if he was actually staying with me, exactly. But what I'm saying is, why are you paying her rent and her because she's like, because she lost her, her bills, job that's... and she's behind on the rent, and she, and, and she stays with and, and he has my son, and I'm gonna make sure he's straight. I'm not gonna have my but son out on the street. I'm not saying he's gonna be on the street. If she knew how to take care of her y'all's kid, then he wouldn't that, be on the street. But, yeah, but it takes two people to take care of a kid. Sure. I realize that, but this this is like cutting into us. From the man's perspective, I understand why you do this. If your baby mother is struggling, your kid's struggling. Unfortunately, they are connected. They are one. So in his mind, taking care of the baby mom, he's taking care of his kid. And I understand from the woman's perspective how she's looking at this going, how are you paying all her bills? Like, this is a whole other woman. Like, if I was doing something for a man this way, it'd be crazy, right? I get it. But from the man's perspective, and I feel like as men, we have to get out of this mindset. Why pay for her bills? Why not just take the kid? File for custody, take the kid. We've been conditioned by society that when the family unit breaks down, kids just go to their mother. We see them on a weekend or we see them on... Take the kid. She's clearly not fit to provide and to protect that kid. If you as a man can pay your bills, can pay her bills, and you have a girlfriend, you're clearly doing well for yourself. You have your own place. You have your girlfriend. That seems quite stable. Whereas your baby mom is struggling. She's unstable. Take the kid. Take the kid. Let the kid live with you. But I feel like a lot of men, because, again, because we're so conditioned into the, the, the child has to be with a mother, the child has to be with a mother, we do some something like this rather than just doing what's actually right, which is taking full custody of the child. You know what, do you know what it is right though? Don't you think women of this generation, mm. especially like if you've not had children young, you're going to have children older. And I feel like some women have, are mm. getting to age groups whereby beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, yeah? exactly. And it sounds deep. But, but it's the nice. I met a girl yesterday, the same, and I was like, how old are you? And she was like, I think she's 45. And I was like, Ooh, this is She ain't got no kids? None. Oh. And I said, she wants children, though. Yes. That's the only R and she, she was wants like, kids. She was, same thing was both like, she wants it so bad. She wants the cutesy. She wants it. But not all men, but some of you are mad. It's so difficult dating and navigating the space. So she wants it. But equally... I also commend her on having the choice to like, pick. But like you said, like the, the pool is pissy. People, they leave and they're pissing in it and they leave it. Like, it's pool's pissy. So it's like, and you're getting into age now. And not only that, my theory is that men can date any age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A 50-year-old can date a 20-year-old, as, as, as un, you know, unconventional as that sound. I'm not going to lie to you, ladies. Well, I'm not going to lie so to you. 30-plus... If you're looking for a toy boy just to do little, little rind dine, little fling up thing, you can get a little young thing. I think what a lot of women don't understand is they are a part of that pissy pool. You know, the reason, the reason why you are single is because you're not fit for a relationship for whatever reason. The people who prioritize relationships, the people who want relationships, get that taken care of very early. Now look, sometimes things don't work out. They have to get back into the dating pool. But if you are good for relationships, you will be in one. You will find yourself in one. So for me, I don't view it as these women settling. I view it as this is what they are. They are a part of the piss. A lot of men make money so they can treat women like dirt. People make money so they can survive even though we shouldn't pay to live. People want money so they can live a better life. But what you talking about is men recognizing that women don't take them serious until they're rich. And the only way you'll know that is when you start making money or when you start getting clout. Because they all show up at the same time acting like they're there for you. And if you're smart, you know what they're really there for. And like I always say, I think it's interesting that men are still willing to share when they get their money. Because they know what y'all about. And they give y'all exactly what y'all came for. Then y'all start getting greedy and wonder why they can't be faithful. Why they don't want to be serious or get married. Why they want to be chased or want flowers. None of that shit is true. They just don't take you serious because they know you're not a serious person. The only men who gonna marry y'all while y'all waiting at the finish line are men who will never take y'all serious. Men who got y'all thinking shit like this. But what y'all fail to realize is that you can't keep talking about marriage and you can't keep convincing a man that you about for better and worse when you only want to show up when shit is better.
We know that when it ain't better or when it don't look like that, y'all leaving right with the good times. That's just what it is. This shit is transactional. And a lot of y'all don't want to accept that. So you say shit like this. Subscribe to my YouTube Planet Reality. I think as well, a lot of women need to ask themselves, why do you allow men who make a lot of money to treat you like shit? Why does money change your morals that much? Like, would you allow a man who isn't making a lot of money? To Probably not. If men know I make good money, I can treat women a certain way, then don't allow them to treat you a certain way. In 30 seconds, the patriarchy was smashed. Um, and the verdict demonstrates a simple truth. Women are better than men. It's a case that centers on whether a museum should be able to create a women's only ladies lounge and essentially discriminate against men in the process. And so it was a man who brought an anti-discrimination case against Hobart's Museum of Old and New Art after he was denied entry to the small closed off lounge. He won in a tribunal, but today that decision has been overturned by the Supreme Court and sent it back to the tribunal for reconsideration, a win for Mona, and as the lounge's creator has described, a win for women. It falls under the ex exception in the Anti-Discrimination Act, and um, that means that the ladies' lounge is exceptional. We'll see how the men take it. The men are a little hysterical, a bit concerned. They're troubled by the power of women. Um, they may appeal, but they're not appealing to me. So the court had to decide whether the ladies' lounge was designed to promote equal opportunity for women generally, and so it could lawfully exclude men. The tribunal didn't find this, arguing that present-day exclusion of men in just one place can't realistically be seen as addressing past inequalities for women. But the Supreme Court took a different view, finding that women's disadvantage still happens today. And in that case, women should be lawfully able to create an exclusive space, like a ladies' lounge. Essentially, a positive advantage as distinct from a general societal disadvantage that they experience. Mona is yet to announce its plans, should the ladies' lounge now be able to reopen. I speak about things like this more on my second channel where we dive into the history of feminism, we dive into race-related things. But a lot of people don't like this, but I can't help it, okay? I am a black man. That's just what I am. So when I see things, I see things from my perspective. That is a perspective of a black man. What feminism has done is it has allowed white women to delude themselves into thinking that they are victims. I, I, I cannot understand it for one second. These women literally live in a system that was created specifically for them to succeed. Prance around like victims and talk about how oppressed they are. When? When? Oh, women couldn't work. You know, you know why women didn't want to work in 1901? Go look up the working conditions. It wasn't a privilege to work. It was a privilege not to work. Then it became a privilege to work. So women started to work. They've always been privileged. In every era, every generation, these women have been privileged. But they've deluded themselves into thinking that they're victims is is crazy. This liquor got me get my zone. Now I'm blowing up your phone. Blowing we smoke in the ozone. Oh, so.